God's got a plan and a way out. How many of y'all know he makes a way of escape? Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory, glory, glory. <laughs> Would you turn to the book of Hosea? In chapter 4. Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6, a famous scripture. Is everybody there? Amen. Would you read it with me? My people are destroyed. Hello. For what? Lack of knowledge. That means my, God says my people are destroyed for lack of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the what? Spiritual things. Amen. He says, because you rejected the knowledge, because I'm trying to rescue you and heal you and deliver you and free you, I'm going to reject you from being a priest for me. And a priest is one of the first offices we fulfill. And fulfilling priesthood is important because that's someone, God says, a priest is one who ministers to the Lord. And if you're not one that ministers to the Lord, you've got no right being a minister at all. That disqualifies you. He said, because you will reject it, I will reject, um, because you reject my knowledge, I'll reject you from being a priest for me. And because you've forgotten the law of your God, I will forget your children. That ain't nice, is it? But that's because a curse comes down the family line. You are what you've inherited. Amen? And so what happens is children go astray until they finally uh, have to get in pits, hit walls, go to jail and all kinds of stuff to say, oh my God, I need Jesus. So again, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of wisdom, and lack of understanding. So there's something that you and I must do. Not only do we cooperate with God, but one of the things the Spirit said to me, he says, my people don't activate the, my, my mind. So there's an area where you and I must activate the mind of Christ. That means turn on. See, there's a bunch of believers walking around that are not turning on the mind of Christ. They're just walking around. They're carnal. They're religious. The mind of Christ is totally different than the carnal mind. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Activating the mind of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. What does activate mean? Turn on. See, when we, you and I were born in this world, uh, there was no turn on. <laughs> we were totally off according to the mind of Christ. That's why you got to be born again, Amen. In verse 1, would you read it with me? Oh, that you would what? Bear with me in a little folly. And indeed you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the same simplicity that is in Christ. In other words, the serpent deceived Eve and caused a disconnect with the presence, the will, and the mind of God. He turned her off. Does everybody get it? How many of y'all know the devil wants to turn your mind of Christ off? He attempts to do that every moment he can, because he knows if he can turn off the mind of Christ, he's got access to you. Amen? Amen? 
So also in this turning off, in other words, the, the devil deceived Eve, the serpent deceived Eve. And, and because of this, she lost vision. See, people go astray on vision when the enemy can come and turn off the mind of Christ. So from that point on, what had happened now, uh, because the mind of Christ was turned off, you and I were born in, uh, in that arena where there was no mind of Christ. Amen? So the only, we, we were born in a fallen nature. The only mind we have was of self, selfishness, and rebellion. That is the mind of self. Self, amen, selfishness, and rebellion. And, and what happens is many depart from doctrine and don't pick, pick up the word again. And in other words, and they sense that something is missing. Why don't I have victory? Well, you can't have victory over the devil with the carnal mind. It's impossible. Amen? All right, let's go a little further. What does it say here? Verse 4. For if he who comes preaches what? Another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted. Now, you see that line that's there? That means something's missing. Because I don't think Paul was going to say, you can well put up with it. Has everybody got it? Paul was not that type of person. He would rebuke it, expose it. So we've got to understand that he's saying, put it up with, in other words, bear through it. Burn through it. Go through it and do something about it. Does everybody understand that? Somebody comes to my house with a different doctrine, I'm not going to treat them in the arena of, I'm going to welcome them in, I'm going to talk to them. I might even let them speak a few words. But by the time they leave, they're going to have a Bible in their hand. Or they're going to run. Man, you, start, you, get, you get these people to knock on your door. Hey, man, I got a great doctor. Good, let's pray. They're gone. Just praying the Holy Ghost, they're gone. No understanding of the things of the Spirit. Hello? Then you see the bottom of their feet. Remember, the serpent turned off the mind of Christ and Eve. And from that point on, then he entered Eve and used her to turn off the mind of Christ in Adam. And you and I have inherited that all. So we are born in sin, aren't we? We are born with blindness. We are born with heart and heart. We are born in the arena of me, myself, and I. The Trinity. Satan. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Like I said, there's many people who've accepted the Lord and still haven't turned on the mind of Christ. So there's an area where you and I got to activate the mind of Christ every single day. And we got to make sure that it's activated no matter what we're doing. 2 Corinthians 3.12 Let's read it together, please. Therefore, since we have what? Such hope. We use great love, boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their what? Their minds were what? Blinded. For until this day, the same veil, that same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil was taken away where? In Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil in the temple was ripped. That means that that veil has been removed to those who are in Christ. But I, I can tell you that sometimes that veil still... You know, we got a teaching called the spirit of the veil. It's very powerful because that's what the enemy wants to do is come back and put that veil back down. And he does it by turning off the mind of Christ. Then he puts the veil on it. And verse 15... But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? Taken away. Now he's going to explain about who the Lord is. 
No, the Lord is the what? Spirit. Spirit. The Lord is the what? Spirit. See, that's why it's so important to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because there are many people who are still carnal. Not baptized with the Spirit, but the veil is still on their eyes. The veil is still on their heart. They don't even know how to, they can't interpret the Word of God correctly either. You know, my people, I, I, I've run into many ministers that told me I'm going to hell because I got a ponytail. Why, why would Jesus make his decision by my ponytail? I mean, I'm telling you, people are plumb nuts. <laughs> this religious spirit brings people really stupid. Yeah. Boy, they can quote the scriptures and even a page number. Yeah. <laughs> but man, they got no idea the things of the Spirit of God. There is no relationship. They are disconnected. And that's what the word says, the letter kills and the spirit brings life. Amen. Now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. Amen. Freedom. We all everybody wants freedom. Well, freedom is going to come by allowing the spirit of the Lord to take your life over. Amen. And what's he going to always do? He's always going to try to encourage and activate the mind of Christ. Keep it activated. Because when you, when that mind of Christ is disactivated, deactivated, you lose relationship with the Spirit. Is it okay? Amen. So you and I were born with a veil from birth, weren't we? Amen? Yeah, veil. Like I said, some still have that veil. So what we want to do is we want to maintain the activation of the mind of Christ. We activate the mind of Christ by getting in his presence and in his word. Now, how do we do that? We worship, right? We praise and we speak his word. We worship and praise and speak his word. We worship and praise and speak his word. That is the initiation of activating the mind of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 3. Let's speak it together. But even if our what? The gospel. gospel, the gospel is known as the message of truth, is what? Veil. It is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. You know, again, there are many individuals out there that call themselves Christians and do not believe the Bible. They don't believe the training of the Bible. They don't believe this at all. I see them, I talk to them. I don't believe the Bible. They have more trust in the president than do the word of God. Boy, they lost. But even if our gospel is veiled, veiled to those who are perishing, whose what? The minds, whose minds the God of this age has what? Blinded. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should what? Shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Christ's sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. In other words, we come out of darkness. <coughs> who have shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have what? This treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Oh, hallelujah. May be of God and not of us. Listen, there are many doctrines of the faith. The word says many will fall from the faith and deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. There are people taking this word and turning it into a false doctrine. I said, you may have the correct interpretation. And it can't be interpreted by the Holy Spirit. People are going to bondage. The one saved, always saved, is not a doctrine of Jesus Christ. That is a doctrine of devils. Does everybody get that? That is not the doctrine of my father. Far be it, you're going to serve the devil and expect to get home. But I accepted Jesus 20 years ago. Okay. Well, why are you still sitting with that person? Why are you still doing the dog? Why are you still touching on clean things? Why are you still serving the devil? And expecting who you serve when you die is where you go. Oh. Oh. Yes. Doctrine. This gospel is known as the doctrine of truth. For me and you, it should be food. 
It is food to our spirit, bringing light and life into our new man. Amen? That what it does is it constantly keeps us connected by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, to the Father. So that you know that you are his child and he is your dad. Has everybody got that? Amen. And he is your dad. So you can't, he can't be your dad, not in the spirit. He's God. Does everybody get that? He should be more than God to you. He should be your father. That means you got a relationship. Amen? So again, you and I, the Word of God, should be food to our spirit, bringing light and life to our new man, which is connected by the Holy Spirit to the Father, by the price of Jesus Christ. What a price he gave. He, he came to connect. Does everybody get that? Jesus is the connector. And he uses his spirit. In Romans 7, And you know what? We all know when the mind of Christ is not activated in us. Amen. And if you don't know, everybody else does. Yes, <laughs> Just ask them. <laughs> man, you in the flesh, man. Ain't nothing activated there. Is that really myself? Huh? Romans 7, verse 15. Speak it. But now it is no longer I who do it, but what? I'll oh, start at 15. I'm sorry, 15. Are you ready? For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I what? Do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but what? Sin what? Dwells in me. Which is the presence of evil, isn't it? Alright. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh. In my flesh. Now remember, your flesh, if you are born again by the Spirit of God, that your flesh is now your old man. Amen. Your flesh is now the one you were born with, physical realm. Your spirit, your new spirit, is one you are born in the spirit realm by God Almighty, who which is has the mind of Christ. Amen. For I know that in my flesh, in my in me, that is in my flesh, my old man, nothing good dwells. Why? Because your flesh is associated with the old man, and you and I were born in darkness. We are offsprings of Lucifer. Now we are offsprings of the Creator, Jesus. Amen? 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 For I know that in me that is in my flesh nothing good dwells. For to do, for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then in the law that evil is present with me. Where? In your member, in flesh. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, which is the spirit of the, my new spirit, right? But I see another law in my members, warned against the law of my mind bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. In other words, that fight is constant. Somebody get it? It's constant. It's always there. Listen, it'd be nice to cut you loose from your flesh. Well, you'd be in the presence of God then. Even Paul cried out to the Lord three times, Lord, Satan has buffeted my flesh. He's given me something that I can't take it. Paul didn't realize it was his flesh interfering him. Verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of death, from my old man, my flesh? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He explains it. So then with the mind, the mind of what? The mind of Christ. 
I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the old man, I serve the what? Law of sin. That means that your new created being in you, which has the mind of Christ, should have dominion and overtake all works of flesh if it's activated. If it's not activated, it's not going to overcome the world. It's not going to overcome the carnal desires of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. It will not overcome it. Remember, flesh is now the old man born in sin. It's blinded. It's separated from the will of God. It lives for itself by feeding it with lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Amen? Amen. Romans 8. Verse 12. You know what? The enemy is deactivating the mind of Christ in many individuals through phones. Through the, he uses technology. All kinds of stuff. Therefore, what? Brethren, Verse 12, we are what? Debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you what? You're going to die, man. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are called what? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. How many of y'all know that fear will shut off the mind of Christ? Fear will shut off the mind of Christ. Why? The word says God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and what? Sound mind. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, whom we cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and of children and heirs and heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be what? glorified together for i consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be what revealed in us so you're going to go through stuff man it's called fiery trials let me share with you about your trials one of the things you're, the uh, trials come to try to number one shut the mind of christ off now People go, well, I don't understand why this... Everybody brings down their own trials. There's a law called what you sow is what you reap. God allows that so, because he can't come against his own law, so he uses it to train us. He watches, he sees, he knows what's what. He wants to know whether you're going to activate the mind of Christ and overcome your trial. Amen? But your trials and tribulations is an a, a, a opportune time to remove all impurities, to expose your enemy. Amen? And in that is to form more of Christ in us. If we're really seeing what our enemy is doing, see your trial, on your tax, it should be exposing the enemy. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God. So we're not to be living according to the flesh. That's how a person thinks then, doesn't it? You know, when people don't feed on the word, they feed on the world. I'm going to say it again. When people don't feed on the word, they feed on the world. And Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23 and starting at verse 1, please. Hallelujah. It says, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you're a man given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. Wow. See, people are, are eating junk food. I'm, I'm speaking of spiritual junk food. They're feeding their spirits with the things of the world, which is junk food. Amen? Of course, in the physical realm, if you eat Twinkies for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're going to turn into a Twinkie. And you're going to have a mind of a Twinkie, too. Although I, anyway. 
There's some Twinkie minds going around already, right? Verse 4. Do not what? Overwork to be rich. Because of your own understanding, stop it. <laughs> Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a what? Miser. Nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Ooh. In other words, as a person thinks, so he is. So when the mind of Christ is turned on, you become Christ. When the mind of Christ is turned off, you become you. Snap. Second Timothy 2. Hallelujah. I have strange conversations with the Holy Spirit occasionally. Thank God that ain't me in the mirror. Just the outward man. Amen. Second Timothy. <laughs> Chapter 2, starting at verse 1, please. Would you read it with me? You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace. What's God's grace? And don't tell me unmerited favor. Because it's not unmerited favor. God's grace is unmerited love. You earn his favor. Hello? You earn his trust and he releases more of you. Amen? He's no respecter of a person. He gives everybody an opportunity. It's unmerited love. Amen? Amen? And grace is what? God's plan to what? Escape. Escape what? The wrath of God. Why? Because you need to escape the devil. So if you escape the deception of the devil, you're going to escape the wrath of God. Amen? Now, you're not going to escape if you don't what? Turn on the mind of Christ. Does everybody understand that? So God's grace is considered, it, it, it's his unmerited love for me and you. Why? Because he came to bring a plan. He said, here's my plan. It's called grace. Okay, cooperate with my grace and you're going to escape the deception of the devil and you're going to escape my wrath. There it is, plain and simple. Okay? Praise God. Let's go a little further then. Verse 2. And the things that you have what? Heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to what? Faithful men who will be able to what? Teach. Everyone say I'm a teacher. No matter what my neighbor says. No matter what my mind says. No matter what my feelings say. And no matter what fear says. I am a teacher. Verse 3. You therefore must what? Endure, endure, what? Hardship is a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. Like I said, some people need to endure some praise, some worship. Verse 4, no one engaged in a warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? rules the hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops consider what i say and may the lord give you what understanding in all things remember that jesus christ the seed of david was raised from the dead according to my gospel for which i suffer trouble as an evildoer even to the point of change but the word of god is not chained Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. For if we what? Come on, read it with me. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny him and he won't 
Praise God. And he won't. We are soldiers. We are, have a warfare going on. It's in the spirit realm. We are fighting against the evil presence of spirits and influences that try to deactivate the mind of Christ. But if you're not in the, if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. If you're not wanting, one that's willing to fight, then you become a runner. And that's all you do is you run in the carnal state of being. Amen? We must be fighters. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 first. Fight, everyone say, I'm a fighter. fighter. Not a runner. I'm the head, the head. Not, the not the tail. Second Corinthians 10. Glory. Activating the mind of Christ. You know, when you first get up in the morning, you need to activate the mind of Christ as quick as possible. If you're thinking about everything else, How about, you know, when you wake up in the morning, the devil stands at the end of the bed. It's got a list. You need to do this. It's got all kinds of lights on it, you know. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. You need to do this. Don't forget this. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Ah! And then, then people don't go pray. You know what they do? They go do what the list says. Instead of activating the mind of Christ and overcoming it. Why? Because God will put everything in divine order if you let him. Everything will flow. Other than that, we become a mess. Frustrated. Anxious. Drained. Tired. And all the other stuff. Trying to fulfill something that God is asking us to do in the flesh instead of in the spirit. Verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10. Though we walk in the carnal arena, we do not war according to the carnal arena. Amen? So there's a war going on, isn't there? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? Mighty in God pulling down what? Strongholds. And what's a stronghold? A memory lie. Something that you agreed with. It's a lie that's interfering. So who's to cast them down? God or us? Us. Casting down what? Arguments. Well, there's no argument in my hand, my foot. Not even in my tongue. Unless I agree with what's in my mind. The argument is in the thought pattern. Amen? Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought, every thought. Not just one. I think I'll bring this one in. No, this one I'll take. No. Every thought. Bringing every thought into the captivity to what? Obedience to Christ. So you're going to compare it with what God says and not what you think, what you feel, or what you assume. Your thought pattern is now the monument of Christ, which is his word. Amen? Bringing everything that's exalting itself against the word of God, trying to deactivate you, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, Everyone say, every thought, every thought has, a has a voice. Every voice, every voice has, a has a presence. Every thought, every thought releases, releases an imagination and an emotion. So we must discern these things, don't we? Why? Because when a thought comes, there's a voice. Doesn't it, every thought has a voice, doesn't it? Amen. And where there's every voice, there's a presence. So if the presence of evil is going to promote a reaction, you're going to react to the things according to the old man, and you're going to sow in the flesh. And if you sow in the flesh, the enemy's got access to you. Because what you sow in the flesh, you reap corruption. But if you sow in the spirit, you reap life. So when it comes from God, right, when it comes from the Lord, you're going to respond. Why? And now you're going to respond because you're going to sow in the spirit. And there's a difference. The emotions that you and I look for is peace, joy, righteousness in the Holy Spirit, which is the love of God. Anything other than that is of the enemy. How many of y'all know hatred is not of God? How about jealousy? 
How about rage? How about anxiousness? How about fear? Anxiety, hatred, bitterness, all of those things. That's what the enemy, try, what's he trying to do? He's trying to promote a reaction because when you react, that emotion feeds a demon. It feeds a what? A demon. All right, should we go a little further? Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Activating the mind of Christ. Glory. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? You learning something? Being refreshed to activate. Everyone say, I'm an activator. <laughs> when you become activated, you become a terminator of evil. So the enemy knows. Do you, you know, people don't realize that the enemy fears us. They fear us. So they're going to try and deactivate the mind of Christ. Because then you're not going to be terminator of evil. You won't be willing to expose. You won't be able to cast out. You won't be able to bind loose. You won't be able to see all the way through. You'll be moved and, and by your emotions, influenced by the world, and all of its frustration. Glory. Good. First, uh, Colossians chapter 1. Is everybody there? Let's start at verse 3. Hmm. All right. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and pray for your love for all the saints. Because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it is also in all the world, and is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. And so you also, what? Learned from Ephesus, our dear uh, fellow servant, who is a, a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf who also declared to us your love in, in the Spirit. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with what? All knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, and that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to what? Be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Consist. Love. He's talking about love, isn't he? You know, love is God's, is the mind of Christ. Amen? Now go, turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Let's read it, please. Love, uh, love what? Suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, never love or fails. That is the mind of Christ. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a what? 
A child, I spoke as a child. Hello. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Why? Because love is the mind of Christ. Amen. Love is the mind of Christ. In Philippians chapter 3. Activating the mind of Christ. Turn it on. That's why the word says stir yourself up. You know, did you ever be working on something and you start thinking carnally? And next thing you go, all of a sudden you feel the slap on the back of your head sometimes. Or somebody hitting your shoulder. Or, yo, yo. What? Would you invite me? Oh, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit. Please help me with this. What you just did is turn on the mind of Christ. And you know what? You can do things a lot better. Philippians 3, 17. Brethren. Would you speak it with me? Brethren. Join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on, the th on what? Earthly things. Why? Is the mind of Christ on? No. They set their mind on their things. He said there's destruction. Amen. The only thing they're doing is feeding their self physically. Verse 20. For our citizenship is where? In heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, hallelujah, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the work by which he is able even to subdue all things, to himself. Like I said, it ain't you in a mirror. You're a spirit. Everyone say, I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit. <laughs> and I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 5. So, you know, we got to take authority. Amen? Amen? Don't be pushed around by your carnal mind. 1 John chapter 5, activating the mind of Christ. You know, when we don't activate the mind of Christ, we really get into tough circumstances. Why? Because the Spirit says he guides us to all truth and he's going to tell you things to come. Amen? You know how many traps we could avoid? You know how many decisions we could have made differently? But there's no sense of going back there now, right? Let's go forward and make the right ones now by keeping the mind of Christ activated. Yes. In verse 18. Would you please speak it with me? For we know that who is ever born of God does not sin. Oh, yes. In other words, he doesn't allow sin to have dominion over him. Doesn't mean he doesn't make a mistake. He's not allowing sin to reign. He's not allowing sin to have dominion. Amen? But he who has been born of God, what? Keeps himself. And the wicked one does what? Does not touch him. Remember we talked about when the mind of Christ is activated, you're actually walking in the future. And the devil can't touch you in the future. Amen? Because there's no distance in the spirit. So now you're living from the future to the present. Why? Because this Bible, these words, this training manual speaks of everything, promises to you who you are. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing. You're seated in heavenly places. You're more than a conqueror. These are all the promises of the future bringing to you always, constantly coming to you. So if you live in the future, you're no longer looking to the past. Amen. And then you're a new creation in Christ where all things pass away and all things become new. Why? By keeping that mind of Christ activated. Keeping it activated. Oh, glory. 
and the devil can't touch you. Then you can do that song. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. Verse 20. Why? Because you're hammering the devil. You know, hammer saved, right? Spirit-filled believer. Amen. Well, I got these faces like, is he really telling the truth? Yes. <laughs> Verse 20. Let's speak. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Verse 19. For we know that we are what? Of God. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Why? Because the mind of Christ hasn't been activated. They have to be unplugged in the world and be plugged into the kingdom. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols that deactivate the mind of Christ. Amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Father, thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Oh, help us to keep the mind of Christ activated. Keep us in the spirit. Keep us filled. Continue to grant us counsel, correction, direction, and conviction that we may follow you all the way home, that we may be the sons that are pleasing to you in every area of our life. Lord, we give you our life because there is no life without you. Lord, we ask that you move mightily and bring revival to this country. Put your servants in office. Remove the evil from the White House, from all government. Establish your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven and bring glory to your name, exposing the wicked, bringing boldness to your people that they may stand strong in the power of you, pulling their swords out, speaking and praising to maintain the mind of Christ to be activated all the time. And we ask this, Lord, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus the Christ. And everybody said amen.